the Lord be with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen Welcome to this Pentecost service. And as we celebrate our first hymn, which will be on the video, will be brought to us by the Newitt family. And it's come down, O oh love divine. They're going to play and sing. Please do hum along. Jesus Christ, he has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen. And as we stand together, and for all of you listening and worshipping elsewhere, we're going to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit down for our first reading, which is from Acts. And I think this one's on the video for us. This reading is taken from Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, uh, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions, your old men will see dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon to blood, before coming out of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, the love of your light is shining. And again, this is by the video, and please do hum along. Not allowed to sing, but we can hum.
And I think it is. <laughs> so now our gospel. Will, are you reading the gospel for us? Please stand, everyone. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 15, verses 26 to 27, and chapter 16, verses 4 to 15. The work of the Holy Spirit. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father, where you can, no longer, can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the Prince of the world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will be receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Will you please sit down? Uh, Barney can't be with us this morning, but he has recorded his sermon and we're going to see the sermon or hear the sermon uh, over the uh, audio. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think my most vivid memory of celebrating Pentecost relates to a confirmation service in Durham Cathedral a few years ago. Canon David Kennedy had planned a liturgy full of creativity which saw the entire service move from one end of the building to the other. It was planned on the basis of there being 30 candidates for confirmation, but when it came to it there were 70, all of whom had brought family, friends, godparents, and members of their own churches. As the service began, there were hundreds of people, all crammed into the Galilee Chapel, just about the smallest space in the main cathedral building. Being packed cheek by jowl with hundreds of other worshippers is not perhaps a particularly frequent experience for members of the Church of England. There was a sense that this was big and ever so slightly out of control. The service began with that reading from Acts 2, the same as our first reading this morning, which tells the story of Pentecost. Being packed into this enclosed space with what, what seemed like a vast number of strangers gave the reading a tangible sense of present reality. Voices seemed to come out of nowhere and as the congregation tried to speak and then to sing together, it seemed to happen in waves, giving a real sense of something, someone, moving among us. People worried afterwards that it was a disaster. I thought it was wonderful. It was a palpably spiritual event as we gathered together to celebrate the gift of the Spirit that Pentecost Day. But that memory makes me tentative now 
as I try to preach on the day of Pentecost this year. The story of Pentecost is dynamic, with its wind, flames and fire. This year has not been dynamic, for very good reason. It has not been allowed to be dynamic. So how does Pentecost fit in? More than that, the spiritual, the, sorry, the scriptural word for spirit in both Greek and Hebrew means not only spirit, but also wind and breath. A lot of what we associate with the Holy Spirit involves breathing, from speaking in tongues to singing spiritual songs. We pray for God's Spirit to inspire us. But the word inspire literally means to breathe in. And our breathing is currently impeded. We can't gather in the way that we used to. We can't sing in the way that we used to. We can't shout and we can't even breathe with the freedom we were once used to. So what should we do on this day, today, of the Spirit? Well, the answer, I realised, was right in front of me, or rather, right in front of you, behind me, if I'd been speaking in church this morning. I'm speaking of our uh, banner of the fruits of the Spirit. In our annual Pentecost celebration of the gift of the Holy Spirit, we tend to turn understandably to the reading from Acts, which tells the Pentecost story. But the Bible, of course, has much more to say about the Holy Spirit than this one, albeit game-changing, event. When we first came out of lockdown, the first lockdown last year, we took the decision to rearrange the layout of St John's Church to maximise our available seating. And somebody, probably Mike, our church warden, had the inspired idea of hanging this banner behind the altar table with its description of the fruit of the Spirit. So as to provide this temporary arrangement with a bit of visual focus. The words on the banner are from St Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, where he describes what grows on you or in you when you live in the Spirit of God. The fruit of the Spirit, he writes, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. He then can, goes on to say that against such things there is no law which is full of meaning in these restricted times. There's nothing to prevent us from living out any of these things. And so he then writes, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. On this day, when we celebrate God's life-giving Spirit in the Church, I want to mark the fact that, whether by accident or design, these words from St Paul have been our watchwords for the past ten months. If we were to understand the Holy Spirit only in the drama of that first Christian Pentecost, with its dynamic emphasis on gathering and interacting together, then we might this year have been left feeling rather removed from the life of the Spirit of God. But Scripture gives us so much more insight 
And, as our banner has reminded us, week by week through this time, the Spirit is seen to be active not only on the big stage of the sort of dramatic gathering described in Acts, but in the small scale daily goodness that might be lived by any and every individual follower of Christ. Such simple human virtues as patience, kindness, generosity, even gentleness, are recognised and celebrated here as signs of God being at work within us. And through this difficult time, examples of the outworking of these simple, achievable virtues have from time to time been widely recognised and celebrated as a blessing for the whole of society. In challenging times, it seems, they have come into their own. And so, as we go forward, still through these times, we should pray using the words of St Paul. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Amen. Thank you, Barney, for that. And as I look at this banner, I'm quite encouraged because I remember it was made in Messy Church. So there's old people, young people, children, sticky fingers, all working together, which symbolises the church, doesn't it? Although we're not all together, we can remember each other. And also, none of the letters are perfect. And some of them are a little bit sort of wobbly and are coming unstuck, a bit like us. But I think it's a wonderful image for us. And, you know, Barney's words and that image and all of us together through this time. It's Messy Church this afternoon. You might remember that in your prayers. If you'd like to stand, we'll say the creed together. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all his apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. And now Joan is going to lead us in our prayers. <clears throat> the response to May thy kingdom come on earth is as it is in heaven. May thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We come this morning to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, with praise and thanksgiving for your unconditional love for humanity shown through the risen Christ and for the gift of the Holy Spirit who came in powerful wind and flames on believers at Pentecost. As they were the first witnesses, inspire us to be bold as witnesses to the living God and demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit in our lives today. May thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Holy Spirit of creation, 
We give thanks for the beauty of creation, amplified last year during lockdown. These help us to be mindful of our responsibilities and the effects of our actions on the climate. We pray for the launch of our eco-group, but the new normal will include a commitment to a simpler way of living, to reduce the carbon footprint and the wasteful use of resources. May thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Spirit of truth, we thank you for the initiative of thy kingdom come, followed by Christians throughout the world this last week. That as it says in Psalm 46, if mountains fall into the heart of the sea and nations are in uproar, we pray that our trust and faith in you will remain rock solid. By the power of the Spirit, may our prayers build bridges as we hold family and friends before you. And may they open the door of their hearts to your love. And we commend to you all who have tied a ribbon on the tree in front of the church, bringing their sorrows and hopes to the cross. May thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Spirit of truth, we pray for our church leaders, for our archbishops Justin and Stephen, for our bishops Paul and Sarah, for our rector Barney and for our clergy team here. May their, may their ministry be blessed and renewed in the power of the Spirit. And we pray for our children who attend local schools and hear the Christmas the Christian message in school worship and for families attending Messy Church outdoors this afternoon, that seeds of faith planted will bear fruit. And we continue to pray for our young people that they will grow in faith despite the thorns and thistles of life. May thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Spirit of peace, we pray for the leaders and people of your world with thanks for the ceasefire between Israel and Palestine. We pray for the children traumatized by the events of the last fortnight and that world leaders will use their influence to pursue a just and peaceful solution to break the cycle of violence and suffering. May your glory rest upon that suffering and divided land. We give thanks for the COVID vaccine and pray for those suffering from the virus that rich countries will donate generously to the COVAX scheme. We hold before you countries of India, Argentina, and the many countries of Africa, that there will be a good supply of oxygen, ventilators, and vaccine. May thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven spirit of hope. We remember all those who have died in the faith of Christ and especially today we remember with gratitude John Benstead whose funeral took place a year ago last week. We pray for Anne and the family and all who mourn. We pray for the Queen and her family, that the Christian hope of eternal life will bring comfort and hope. We reflect on the life of Jesus, 
that his presence brought healing and wholeness. And we hold before you all who are struggling with all sorts of issues, mental health, broken relationships, financial problems, and just worried about the future. <clears throat> we pray for those with ill health, for Amy, for Diane and her husband and family, for Mavis, cared for by David, for Anne and Pippa, and for Judy. And Judy, who has Parkinson's, requests our prayers this week as she waits for a hip operation on the 31st of May, a week tomorrow. As we hold them all in our prayers, may they know your healing presence and that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of need. May thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And Spirit of the living God, we pray for all those we love and care for, and for ourselves. Let us open our hands, palms up, and say together, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Break us, melt us, mold us, fill us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. come to a time of um, pen penitence, which means really sort of opportunity to bring things that we regret one way or another to God, to the Spirit, uh, praying for forgiveness and knowing that we'll receive it. So we say together, bottom of page three, Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have not lived by our own strength and have not by the power. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. We sing, well, we don't sing, do we? <laughs> we have someone sing for us. 
Come Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. Again, the Newit family and friends. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. This day we give you thanks because in fulfilment of your promise, you pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us, with your gifts, leading us into all truth and uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name by ever praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. 
who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And we look for the coming of your kingdom with this bread and this cup. We make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. If you're familiar with how we have communion, you'll know now that I just go out to wash my hands and then I'll come back in if you'd like to just uh, use the hand sanitizer and come up and I'll give you a piece of wafer. Uh, and we'll start at that end and then work through the church. Just give people a little chance to get back to their place before the next person comes up. Thank you. So the body of Christ, broken for us all. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
prayer after communion. O faithful God, who didst fulfill the promise of Easter by sending to us thy Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of eternal life, open our lips by the same Spirit that every tongue may tell of the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we say the prayer on the middle of page seven. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have our last hymn, which Amy is going to feature on the video. Uh, we'll walk the land.
Now the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. And the peace of the Lord be always with you and those you love and those you pray for. Oh. So offer one another some kind of greeting even if you can't touch. You can hug now if you come from the same household. <laughs> Thank you. Notices, there are a few. Uh, this is one, the quarterly, which is out at the back. There are some June issues available in the foyer for anyone who doesn't live in the delivery area. Anyone willing to assist with delivery, please speak to David Budgeon. Where's David? Over there. Is he? Oh, over there. <laughs> Kath Shanks, who's over there. Judith Bumby, I don't think he's here, or Paul Chandler. Uh, as we said, it's messy church this afternoon. Are there any other notices? Yes? Next Sunday is Trinity Sunday. Those of you who've been desperate to sing, we're now allowed six singers. Adriel will be playing the organ, and it'd be lovely to have six singers. Anthony and I will be elsewhere. I'm taking a service in another church. So I really need six singers. With six of you, none of you will be too exposed. So if you've really been frustrated this morning by not being able to sing out, please, could you perhaps raise your hand now to let me know if you would be willing to sing? I did hear one or two escape. Yes, so please, we do need six. It would be very sad to have just the organ with no singing at all. So please, be brave. Those of you who have sung in the past, even though your voices may not be as you want them at the moment, maybe you could join in. Um, and maybe tomorrow, next Sunday, maybe you'll have decided to be brave. And it will be a question of just coming up, standing on the chancel step and singing. So whoever's taking the service, maybe give some encouragement and nudges. But I'm sorry I won't be here to sort of help. Any, any other notices anyone would like to give? Anyone want to share a word of encouragement or thanks for prayers answered? Okay. So we stand for the blessing. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.